Uh, in the second message, I want to dwell and concentrate on making commitments to the Lord. How commitments so important in everything that we do, especially in our commitment uh, to first fruits giving. Because we know that there are many great things that are being accomplished in our ministry. When we are consistent and when we are true to our first foot commitment, just like in our church, I found it's a great, great blessing in our ministry over there for all these years. We we're able to buy lots, expand our property. We have been building until now, building and building uh, buildings around us. And uh, many things have been accomplished also in our mission churches. They were able to help other churches as well, especially our missionaries. With this first fruit giving, I've been telling our, our pastors around there that we really, we really do not need to go to America and uh, uh, ask for money over there for our ministry, for our projects. If we can only teach our people in giving our first fruits every year, something can really be done every year. So I know that there are a lot of things also been accomplished in Cebu, the Bible Baptist Church, because of your first fruit giving. So it's just a refreshing once again in this message. There's nothing new because it's all in the Bible and many of the verses and many of the principles points and messages that I've been saying for all these years now could be repeated again. But, you know, it pays to really repeat something that is good, uh, worth repeating for us to really uh, give importance to something, especially in this first fruit. So let us learn from the commitment, especially of, of one of the greatest servants of the Lord, aside from Jesus Christ, which is Paul. Let us learn lessons from the commitment of the Apostle Paul that he made with God. Our text is found in 2 Timothy chapter 1 and in verse number 12. I'm going to read it to you now, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse number 12. The Bible says, For the which cause I also suffer these things, nevertheless I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and I am persuaded that is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Can you imagine and every time we make commitment to the Lord, he really, really keep it? God does not forget our commitment. That's why we ought to really be sincere in making our commitment, putting our heart in it. And let us not forget what we have committed to the Lord because he doesn't forget it. Another verse in Philippians chapter 3, verse 12, Paul said again, Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend, that for which also I am apprehended of Jesus Christ. That talks about his commitment. I will follow after. Then in verse 13, he said, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward unto those things which are before. That is commitment. And in verse 14, he said this, I press toward the mark for the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. What he's saying here, he's, me, he simply, uh, simply is, is this, that whatever happens, I'm going to fulfill I'm going to finish what I have started. So if you are going to commit tonight for our first fruit, I hope and I pray that in the right time or in the due date of giving our first fruit, we will also finish it. And we'll do it and commit our first fruit this year to the best we can. Let's pray heavily, Father Lord, once again, I claim your power, I claim your wisdom. Be upon me, make uh, may a blessing to your people, and oh God, guide my lips to every word, to every message that I'm going to share to your people today, and with an open heart, the right attitude, oh, God, oh Lord, they will accept, receive, 
the message and the challenge with the determination, with a great decision to also do it. Lord, we give you back the glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, in Acts chapter 20, verse 24, Paul said, None of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. These are strong expression of commitment Paul made to the Lord. None of those things move me, neither count I my life there unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy. And the ministry which I have received of the Lord, Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. Now today, we are going to renew our commitment, specifically in our first fruit giving this year. And I've been telling you about facts of first fruit. But for a little background of this, I want to refresh in your mind, you know, the truth or the facts about first fruit. And we know that first fruit offering is a yearly commitment to our God. So a little review of the facts and principles of first fruits will help us fulfill the demand and desire of the Lord. First of all, first fruit giving has been one of the first revelations God gave to the first family on earth. you find that in Genesis chapter 4, verses 1 to 7. So nobody can say here that it's just invented just now. No. In, in, during the time of the first family, early in their formation as a family, you know, right after they sin, I believe one of the revelations God has given to them is the returning and honoring God of the first fruits. You remember the story of the, over there. Uh, Cain killed his brother because of the issue of first fruit giving. Because what Abel g gave to the Lord was first cling of his flocks. While Cain, he just gave to the Lord fruit. That does not necessarily mean the first fruit. So, if we are going to apply the lesson and the principle is that we just cannot, you know, somebody or anybody can give all kinds of offerings, but not necessarily the first fruit. You, we can give other offerings like the tithes and, you know, love offering and the mission offering and all these offerings, but God first of all requires us the first fruits. And when Abel gave his first link to the Lord, God said he accepted Abel and he has a great respect to the offering of Abel. But to Cain, he rejected Cain and he refused the offering of Cain. Why? It was not done rightly and biblically. It was not done according to what God had revealed to the first parents, to the first uh, family. So I hope that we will be careful in returning our first fruit to the Lord and of giving our offerings. First fruit giving has been one of the first revelations God gave to the first family on earth. Number two, first fruit giving was clearly instructed by God to Moses once the Israelites entered the promised land. You find the story in Deuteronomy chapter 26. Verses 1 to 11. Find it with yourself. Uh, the instruction, put yourself in that story and understand. Understand how important it is to God, for God to really review and uh, remind Moses of his desire of honoring him of the first fruits. Then, first fruit giving is actually a picture of Christ's resurrection from the dead that completes the redemption's plan, which also our hope to be resurrected when our times come. Because in 1 Corinthians 15, 20, 23, it was mentioned over there that Jesus Christ is our first fruits from the dead. In fact, back to Abel, 
when he offered that first ling, the first ling, not the second ling, but the first ling, the first fruit of that animal, it was also looking forward to what Christ will do on the cross of Calvary to redeem the fallen man. Because the, if there's Jesus, the, the Bible says, without shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. So with those sacrifices of animals, it symbolizes, it typified the coming Savior as being the, as the Lamb of God that will take away the sins of the world. So, those are facts and principles of first fruit giving to the Lord. And also, first fruit giving is only one form of one offering we give unto God. We know that. And again, first fruit giving is associated, it is in bracket with the tithes. Whenever God requires God's people to bring the tithes, He also t tell them about bringing and honoring Him with the first fruits. Number three, first fruit giving is a picture of our salvation. Number four, first fruit giving is a token to show that we recognize God as the giver of the harvest or blessings that we receive in our lives. When we return and give Him our first fruit, we are acknowledging, Lord, You are the source of everything that I need. All these that I receive are coming from You. Then, another fact, a Bible principle that uh, Ezekiel 48, 14, and also in Proverbs 3, 9, Deuteronomy 26, 10, that first fruit giving is holy, and when we give it back to the Lord, we are actually engaging to worship Him. Give, first fruit giving is holy, and it is an act of our worship to God. The next is that giving, the proper way of giving our first fruit is that we should br bring it to the house of God. Bible Baptist Church Katipunan is the right place where you are going to return and give your first fruits all this year. Okay, in verse uh, number seven, first fruit giving should be the best according to number 18, 12. You know, I've been increasing my first fruit no more, abasing my first fruit in my monthly income. I receive allowances, you know, in our church. And uh, I just trusted God over and above all these allowances monthly that I receive from the church. My first fruits every year has been increasing and increasing every year. And uh, what a blessing to see my wife also living by faith. She was able to fulfill her first fruit last year of 70,000 knowing that she does, doesn't even have a, uh, a job or a source of income. Now she is receiving a little pension being a senior citizen now. But you know, that is not that much. 3,000 a month. She increased her first fruit this year again to 80,000. And when I ask her, can, wow, can you really trust God this amount? She said, she told me, don't you ever underestimate my faith. The Lord has never failed me yet. And so, you know, just do your best, trusting God. He is going to give it to you because everything we need actually comes from Him. Ipaagi alam na sa ito. Iba? Okay, so our first fruit giving should be the best. Don't just even limit yourself sa imo lang source of income that month. O mola nang imo allowance, mola nang amount, imo na dawat kada buwan. You can go over that. Because the more you give and honor the Lord, the more He will honor you and will give you also then, it is not only uh, be done to the best we can, but first fruit should not be delayed. First fruit giving should not be delayed. The first fruit of 2020 should not be uh, paid 2021. The first fruit 2021 should be given within that year as well. 
It should not be delayed according to Exodus 22, verse 29. Then of course, you know, in, in 2 Chronicles 31, verses 4 to 5, Numbers 18, 18 to 14, Ezekiel 44, 20 to 30, Deuteronomy 18, verses 1 to 5. All these books and all these chapters and verses show that actually God requires the first fruit from His people to give this as this portion belongs to the priest. First fruit giving is actually for the priest. Practically speaking, God does not need our tithes. God does not need our offerings, material things, so that we can enrich Him and we will be able to meet His needs. God has no need. He is the all-sufficient God. He's the one that gives us. So, whenever also we give all these material things, it is not because we are going to enrich God. He doesn't need anything. But He requires the tithes so that there will be meat in His house, so that the workers can live, can be sustained, can also be helped, and can be assisted. God requires the first fruit as what He has uh, told us in the Bible because that is the portion actually of the priest. And in our time, it is the pastor that leads the church. But you know, in our church practically speaking, I did not use the first fruit. I do not claim the first fruit. Our people know about it. We were able to have uh, all these uh, improvements in our church, the building, the lot, the vehicles, all these things, because of the first fruit. And I do not use it for myself. The same way, as I look at your church, and as I look at Pastor Gisalva, he doesn't use the first fruit for himself. But basically, scripturally speaking, first fruit giving is for the priest. But you know, we are just contented. We are just love to serve God and rely upon God, trust God every day of our lives and our needs. All this giving are being put to the ministry of the Lord. Then also in Proverbs 3, 9 and 10, first fruit giving brings bountiful blessing as being promised in that passage. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first verse of all that increase, so shall thy barn be filled with plenty. Okay? Then also, first fruit giving should be done yearly. Nehemiah 10, 34, 38. I already have mentioned that. Next is, first fruit giving makes you a respected and acceptable child of God. Just like what we have seen in the life of Abel, construct. Uh, contrasted by the rebuke and discipline God has uh, given to Cain for not doing it properly. Then first fruit giving affirms or vouches our relationship with God. It affirms or vouches our relationship with God as Deuteronomy chapter 26, 17 to 19 is suggesting. Then Lastly, Proverbs 3, 11 to 12, God said, Denial of giving your first fruit would bring discipline. It's all up to you. And I can only educate, our pastor can only educate, inform, preach the message, challenge you to the best we can. But at the end of the day, you are still in control of your heart. You are still in control of your decision. You obey, God said, Blessing, you disobey, that's your choice. But God said, when you disobey, there is a curse. Obedience brings blessing. Disobedience brings a curse. That's why, let us learn from the commitments of those who went ahead of us. I have been learning, I've been blessed with the people that, you know, have served God ahead of me. Looking at their lives, how they've been committed, being a pastor, being a preacher, and being a servant of the Lord. And so, commitments can really challenge and can really encourage somebody. I hope that when we do our commitment, those that are following our footsteps, those that are watching and observing us, 
will also be encouraged and be led to that right path that they should also go. You know what? Without commitment, Christian life is but an empty profession. Success in any area of man's endeavor is fundamentally a byproduct of commitment. We are here right now, and we have seen and hold on things that are just product of some people's commitment. So, I am here right now in the ministry because of the commitment of my pastor, Pastor Gisalva. If he did not continue, and if he broke his commitment to the Lord, there's no telling kung asa man ko karon. Kung on siya ako gihimu karon. Maybe I am one of those destroyed and ruined lives in this world. So because of some commitment that's been fulfilled, true commitment that some people have committed or have done, we are what we are today. We are here today serving the Lord. Commitment is, is defined as a promise. It is a promise to do. It is a promise to do or a promise to give something. Commitment is defined as a promise to be loyal to something or to someone. Another uh, definition is commitment is the attitude of someone who works very hard to do or support something. We have many cost-oriented groups or people around us and are even willing. Thing. Some commitments or some cause are really evil. But some people are committed to that one. Have you realized that one? Well, now we are on the other side. We are in a godly side, with the divine side. And we are in the right side. If other people who are in the wrong side have committed themselves so that they could fulfill their evil intention and evil desire and fulfillment of their evil imaginations. How much more God's people that are in the cause of Jesus Christ. Amen? What a challenge. The synonyms of commitments are this. Allegiance, attachment, constancy, fidelity, devotedness, Loyalty and faithfulness. Those words are the other side or the other face of commitment. They have the same in nature and essence. Commitment means allegiance. Commitment means attachment, constancy, fidelity, devotedness, loyalty, faithfulness. Both in the spiritual and secular arena, we find people in the pedestal of success because of one common ingredient imprinted in their biographies. It is commitment. In the area of 10 richest men in the Philippines, you find in there, these 10 richest people in the Philippines, one great word that is being emphasized, commitment. Commitment. In the fields of sports, I could use the example of Manny Pacquiao. He's now a senator and maybe running next election to be the vice president or maybe a president, you know. From that pitiful kid in Jinsan, na daw halos makakaon, makigsunan, makaluluoy ng mga kigsunan niya. When he started out his boxing career, he's not like that. But with this commitment, in his heart, he is now what he is because of his commitment. In the pedestal of talent and beauty, may mga naatay mga Miss Universe yan ang daog. No? Mga Pilipino, nahimong Miss Universe. And one of those been interviewed, nagdamgo ba ka, nagdesire ka ba, kamusta? Yeah, it's not easy to be here, but it is not an accident. Every step of the way, I have disciplined myself. And it was a commitment. I have many failures. I have many discouragement. I have many setbacks. But because of commitment, you know, commitment brought me where I am today. Miss Universe. In the scope of arts and sciences, we find that imprinted word commitment. 
In the world of inventions and advanced technology, those people who have authored those things, we find in their character and nature that word commitment. In the area of what is in place of be and being used today, things, there are many things around us and in our hands and in our lives that we possess are just but products of somebody's commitment. And what about in the spiritual area? What about the spiritual area? You know what? The Bible is filled with imprints of men and women who accomplish great things for God and people, and we are just the blessed results of their commitment. If you remember Noah, Noah, because of his commitment, for more than a hundred years preparing that ark to save the world, you know? Noah, because of his commitment, saved a human race. Moses freed the slave people of God after 400 years being enslaved in Egypt. David restored the kingdom. Joseph preserved a nation because of his commitment. He went through many dark hours on time of his life, great testing of his dreams that have come true because of his commitment. Jesus brought salvation. The apostles died for Christ and his church because of their commitment. The early Christian martyrs defended the Bible and through Christianity because they were committed. The missionaries both in the past and present day are giving their lives for the preaching of the gospel where they are called to labor. What is that? Commitment? And what did commitment do to Paul? What did commitment do, do to Paul? And what is going to accomplish it in your life? Commitment will do something. It will, uh, it will result something good in our lives. Like what it did to Paul. First of all, commitment pushed Paul to move forward. In his writings, in his book, in Acts 20, 24, Paul said, None of those things move me. He was trying to mention in the book of Acts chapter 20, All those dangerous times and dangerous hours of his life, dangerous places from dangerous people, and yet he said, none of those things move me. Neither count I my life dear unto myself. It just caused him to move forward. It did not deter him. It did not stop him because he was committed. It pushed him to move forward. And you know what? Kung may naasad na commitment, mga kisunan, We'll just go forward and forward and forward and forward until we see Jesus Christ in person, face to face. There's no time to backslide. No time to sidestep. A man that is committed will only advance every day of his life, moving forward toward his goal, toward his dreams, toward the accomplishment of what God had planned and designed in his life. It pushes him to move forward. Philippians 3, 13, But this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. Why is that? He was committed. He's not turning back. He's not being sway away. But he's just moving forward. Ang tao nga may commitment, may isunan, sige lang na, padayon na, na, padayon na, na, bisan katapusan na sa iya ginawa, mupadayon na. He's just moving forward. Anybody, Magkisunan why commitment? Uh, karon makaingon ka nga. Ingon mo faithful? Pero why commitment? Tanawa. Dili madugay. Mawagtang na sa dalanon. Mawagtang na sa paglagad. Balik na sa kalibutan. Balik na sa yakinabuhing. Unod nun o kalibutan nun. Oh, how, and how commitment is so important to us. It will push us to move forward as what it did to Paul. Number two, Commitment to Paul was a blessing. Why? Not only it pushed him not to move forward, but it also prompted him to be more focused. It prompted him to be more focused. In Philippians chapter 4, Philippians chapter 4, and in verse number, chapter 3, and in verse number 14, chapter 3, and in verse number 14, Paul said this word, I press toward the mark 
for the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I press toward that mark for the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Can you imagine his eyes were focused on that high calling of God? On that price of that high calling of God? Ang usa ka tao nga may commitment, may kisunan, it will only push him to move forward. And number two, it will prompt him to be more focused. Tanawa mga tao nga may commitment. Mga tao, mga mga ulitaw, may commitment sa isa ka babae, ay bisan kinsa na lang ang iyat tanaw ni ana. Oh, daghan mga babae siya mga mata, dili ka focus. Pro sa ka tao nga may commitment sa usa ka babae, ay bisan pito ka bukid ang iya lakbayon, taas lapad nga suba ang iya languyon, liyon og tigre. Ang iya awayon mga kaigsoonan alas 4 sa hapon. Na naginato sa balay sa babae nga iya gin Luyagan. Concentration is a cousin of commitment. Focus. It prevented, it prompted him to be more focused. Kung may commitment ka, forward ka lang, tutom ka simbahan. Then focus ka. Mag-commit ka sa, ato, sa first fruit na ron, more focus ka. You cannot dare and afford to backslide. And turn away from the throne of God because you have commitment. You will always pray to the Lord. Look up to God and say, Lord, I have this commitment. Help me to be focused on your power and on your provision and on your person. A man with commitment will be pushed to move forward, will be prompted to be more focused. Then number three, commitment will prevent you from failing and falling. What did commitment do to Paul? It prevented him from failing and falling. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, if you can open your Bible in that passage, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 24 down to verse number 27. Paul has this to say to all of us today. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize. So run that ye may obtain. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Are you focused to master? Are you focused to do your best? To have a wonderful result? And to reach your goal? Every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beat it the air. Wa ka nag-appeal diha sa dagan, nga wa man sigurado di ay. Jaging-jaging ka lang diha. Why ka man tinutuyo, why man purpose, Huwag ka man desisyon, nga tapuso ni mong lumba. Pawa niya. Mm, di ba? So kita nagdagan man with a reason, with a purpose, with that right motivation. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, sigurado man yung ato, sigurado man yung ginoon na ato, sigurado man yung magpromisa ng ato, ginoos, alang ka na ato, sigurado man yung ato, ng ato commitment niya. Ato pangako niya, let us run certainly. Okay, then, so fight I, not as one that beat the air. Wata ni kay bugno diri sa ato kaaway, wata ni kay bugno sa yawa, o sa kalibutong sa ato unod, may egzonan nga way yun tama, dilita ka knockout. Dapat yun, sigurado, kada buhi na to, sang ato kinumo, sang ato, kwan ba? Sang ato inumol ni, mutama yun siya, muigo yun siya. Musa na nga ito pag kinabuhi ng Kristo. Ano? Kanang may ego ba? May tama ba? Di improve ba? Di ba? Dili nga pangutanon ka sa last year. Kamusta ka Brad? May ngayon ka. Oh, Maoragya po. Sa nagligad, kita na saan mo. Kamusta ka Brad? Oh, sa grasa sa Diyos, maoragya po. Muna wala di ay grasya na. Nga ano man maoragya po. Kung may grasya sa Diyos, dili lang na maoragya po. Oy, kamusta ka Brad? Aw, sa gahom sa Diyos, maura man gyapon. Oh, tsaka, may gahom ka sa Diyos, maura ka man gyapon. 
Kumusta ka, Brad? Aw. Oh. Pagtuo ra man eh. Pinaagi sa pagtuo, ti mauro man gyapon. Noon siya kayo mo pagtuo, wag na nagbunga. Di ba? Sa iyo, na dapat may improvement, may accomplishment, may production. Di ba? May ego ba nga kristuhanon? May direksyon ba? So fight I not as one that beat it the air. In verse 27, by, uh, But I keep under my body and bring it to, into subjection, lest by any means when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. Gibantayan ni Tanan ni Paul to stay faithful, to stay focused and move forward because he doesn't want that day. At the end, they become useless and waste. Ibantaya niya ni. Kag nahimu niya, naabot niya ni Tanan because he was committed. It prevented him from failing and falling. A person that has commitment will always be productive. A person that is, commi- that is committed will always grow mature and will become responsible dependable, fruitful, and faithful. So what did commitment do to Paul? It pushed him to move forward. It prompted him to be more focused. It prevented him from failing and falling. Next thing is that com- the commitment of Paul pressed him to be fruitful. It pressed him to be fruitful. Walay commitment, ah, maingon ka malang, kisira-sira, whatever will be, will be. Ang mga tao nga may commitment, mabinungahon, oy, may naaginabunga. Something so significant can be manifested in his life. His life will be fruitful. People who have committed their lives and stayed in the ministry of the Lord, been planted in the courts of God, God's house, the Bible says, even in their old age, will still be flourishing and producing like our pastor, Pastor Gisalva. All his life, when he turned his back from his medical practice, he turned, you know, he set aside all those instruments in his hand to practice his medical skills, putting the Word of God in His hand. Until now, how many fruits? How many great things? How many lives have been changed? I am one of those precious fruits of His commitment in the ministry. Doc, dagan salamat, Doc. Ni ako di karon nagwali tungod sa imo commitment. Dili ka kumitido no kaniadto sa imo pag-commit sa imo kinabuhi wala ko diri subong. Og karon ang kining ga-operate sa kamera, Pastor Jumer wala pod ni unta. <laughs> now, he is training a young man to be sent out for mission. Kining young man ni, eh, why ni direction siya kinabuhi? Kon dili ni kita gan ni Pastor Jumer. O niya, kunwai ko commitment, wala ni si Jumer. Kung ikaw wala ka commitment, wala sad ko. Tanawa na, no? Ang tao ka may commitment, dili maihap, dili masulti, dili maimagine ang iya makamples o mabunga siya kinabuhi. So, Dok, salamat sa iyong commitment, Dok. Ha? Praise the Lord. Hope that we can learn from somebody's commitment. Jesus Christ was committed his heart and his eyes were all, always 1 Corinthians 15, 57 to 58. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15, 57 to 58. But thanks be to God which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast and movable always a pounding in the work of the Lord for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord 
kung dili komitado si Paul, dili siya makasulti ni ini sa pagparayon, pagpabilin, mga kaigsunan. These are the words penned by committed people. Then lastly, commitment will prepare you in the way of faithfulness. What did commitment do to Paul? It prepared him in the way of faithfulness. You want to be faithful? Start with little commitment. Fulfilling that commitment. That commitment is growing and moving and becoming dependable. Before long, you find yourself on the way of faithfulness. You want to be faithful? Start with commitment. You cannot trust and you cannot count on people to be faithful. People with no commitment. 2 Timothy chapter 4. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, as we close our message today, in 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4. Okay. I am looking at the wrong. Here it is, 2 Timothy chapter 4, and in verse number 7, Paul said these words, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Those are the words of committed people. They are going to stay there and fight, not just fight, but fight a good fight. They are not just hoping, but determined to finish their course. And they are there standing, fighting, keeping the faith that God has entrusted to them. Your commitment will push you to move forward. Your commitment will prompt you to be more focused. Your commitment will prevent you from failing and falling. Your commitment will press you to be fruitful. I hope you will be fruitful and prosperous this 2021. Commit yourself in giving to that first fruit to the best you can. Your commitment will prepare you in the way of faithfulness. Faithfulness does not happen overnight. It is a pattern that you follow. And it starts with Commitment. And here is some, as I conclude, here is some challenge and there are some suggestions how you can positively fulfill your commitment, especially the commitment you're going to make for the first fruit to be given this year, 2021. Number one, you want to fulfill what you're going to commit in your first fruit this year? Pray. Pray for an amount. Pray to God. Claim His blessing. Claim His power. Claim His presence to be with you. Pray. Start everything with prayer. Without Him, we can do nothing. Number two, as you prepare to make a commitment, not only pray right now, but prioritize. Pray, then prioritize. Prioritize. As first fruit being defined as first of all fruits. So in our giving, in our offering, give that first offerings to the Lord. The first blessing God is giving to you 2021. I have already given the first Sunday of this year, January, the first Sunday. I was able in front of our people, I told them to encourage them, not to be proud about it, but to encourage them. God has supplied my first fruit already 2021. Here is my 160,000 right now. I have given my first fruit 2021 160,000 because I prioritize it. Pray, prioritize. Number three, plan how you are going to execute it. How are you going to appropriate an amount? Plan, plan it out. Hindi nga, kisira-sira, whatever will be, will be. Kung may naalang mahabilin, kung unsay lang naadiha. No. Pray, prioritize, and plan about it. 
Amen? And then number four, persist. Because right after you make a commitment, Satan will come to hinder you, to tempt you. The flesh will intervene to disturb you. Then the world is there opening its hand of all kinds of temptations that you are not going to fulfill your first fruit. He is going, the world will offer you many, many things in this world that you will soon forget what you have committed as first fruit to the Lord this year. So persist. Persist no matter what. No matter what. Prioritize. And the more you pray to really ask God's power to protect and preserve your commitment. Pray, prioritize, plan, persist, and then lastly, perform it. Perform it. Perform it right away. When the Lord gives you the demand, when He answers your prayer, don't, don't use it for other things. Don't use it for yourself. I believe because this is God's desire, God's plan, it will always work out the way God wants it to be done. He will always supply for the need of His people. He will always, he will always answer the desire and the prayer of God's people for His glory and for His honor. So I believe God is supplying my needs so that I could give my tithes, I could give my love offering and all these mission offerings. When I commit to mission, God gives me the amount. Why? He is the one who owns everything. Amen? Then when I committed myself to giving to first fruits, all I have to do is to pray and ask from the Lord. Lord, I'm going to honor you. I want to honor you and worship you and exhort you through my first fruit. Give me that amount, Lord. Give me that amount. So, 2020, God have already given me an amount for 2021. What about you? Will you pray? Will you prioritize? Will you plan? Will you persist? Will you perform giving the 2021 first fruits to the Lord? May God bless you with this message. And God has been challenging you as you listen to the messages of the Lord given to you today. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, may you will undertake for every person 